Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've got a ton of new leaks to go over for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. A little bit of new starter Pokemon information, a few bits and bobs about the new Ed Sheeran song and then a few other things to cover as well. Like I say, a lot of stuff to talk about today. So if you're excited for the video, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything we mention in today's video. Subscribe if you're brand new for daily Pokemon content. Ring the notification bell. With all of that out of the way though, let's get into the video and I really hope that you enjoy. So, starting things off, we're talking about the new Ed Sheeran song. So obviously this did pop up on Thursday. Absolute banger to be fair. I actually really like the song. The music video is Chef's Kiss as well. Like, I love the fact that the, the way it's animated and stuff, it looks really, really good. Um, but something that we also knew because it had been leaked before was that this Ed Sheeran song was going to be in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. I personally thought it was going to be during the end credits. However, though, uh, they've actually tweeted out saying, you know, a wild Ed Sheeran appeared. Celestial is out now. Ed made this song for everyone who carried Pokemon with them whenever they want, uh, wherever they went. And then it says hidden in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. So it's actually hidden in the game. So I don't think it actually is going to be during the end credits. I think it's going to actually be something that you have to seek out and find, um, which is quite interesting. I think it could potentially be like a quest or something. I don't know how they're going to incorporate it into the game. Um, but either way, it is hidden in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. You can find Ed's song in-game on November the 18th. However, though, Riddler Q then came out and said this song will be played in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. And nearly all people cried while playing the final chapter. So it seems that this song is going to be somewhere around um, the, the final chapter. I think when they say hidden here, I think they just mean that it's going to be like... You know in the game i don't think it generally means that you have to go out your way to find it because it seems that it's going to be in the final chapter so i think that something really sad happens and then as that sad thing happens um the music's just kind of playing in the background again potentially story spoilers someone is going to pass away in this game so maybe it could be like one of the professors or one of the important characters, maybe one of the rivals or something like that. Again, it's apparently a very, very sad ending. They're saying all, nearly all people cried while playing the final chapter. So it could very well be like another Mystery Dungeon Red Blue Rescue Team situation because that was a really sad moment, a very poignant moment when I played that for the first time. And again, it seems that that is the direction they're going with, with Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. So yeah, very sad scene at the end of the game. Um, again, it must be when you complete all of the stories. It's not just going to be one of, when you complete one of them. Um, so yeah, either way, look out for that. The next link that we're going to go over though is this. Now this is about the starter evolutions. So this was posted by Blaze Incineroar and Riddler Koo posted something and uh, basically someone replied saying, Koo, which starter middle evolution do you like the best? And Riddler Koo said none of them. So to me, um, of course, it is just one person's opinion, but it's not great to hear that he didn't like any of the middle stage starters. Again, middle stage star evolutions aren't usually that important because you don't really have them for that long you know you're obviously choosing your starter either Quaxly, Sprigatito or Fuecoco and then of course they're going to evolve but then they're going to evolve into the final stages that's what everyone's really bothered about this the middle stages are just never really um that like I say important uh, but the fact that he doesn't like any of them is a little bit worrying um again Riddler Koo said that Quaxly's final evolution has the best design um so that's again probably the one that's going to look the, the best but again it's just one person's opinion um, it's not like loads of people have played this game and they're all saying, you know, all the second stage evolutions are terrible. It is just Riddler Koo's opinion. Um, and I can't remember what he said he liked the best in Sword and Shield. Um, but either way, a little bit of information about the second stage starters there might not look the best, unfortunately. It could be um, a three. Well, I don't know. Like, my personally, my least favorite middle stage starter is probably... Um, Quillanin. I hate it so much, uh, the Chespin evolution. Um, so if they all look like that, I won't be happy. But either way, a lot of people do like Quilladin. Again, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Everybody likes things differently. Um, however, we also have this about the starters from Soul Silver Art saying, I think this is finally the last piece of the most recent Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet trailer that I wanted to cover. Look close at Quaxley's tail. Ducks do have similar feathers, but not as long as defined, uh, not as long and defined. I believe this is the first sign of what its tail will become as it evolves. Um, so yeah, just obviously a very uh, defined tail there. And it looks like it could grow out straight, kind of like a blue-footed uh, booby's tail. But then it could open and separate like a peacock's tail. This is all just me speculating what could happen off a tiny detail. But I found it interesting the first time I saw it. Um, and then we've got people here saying, you know, it will dance. 
Um, and apparently it is going to be like based off a, a dancing peacock and stuff. So the tail very well could split open. But like I say, apparently Quacks D's final evolution is the coolest. Um, but yeah, either way, because of this tweet from Riddleku, I'm not expecting anything crazy from the middle stages. But again, it's not really like you have them for 16 levels. It's well, not 16 levels. You usually have them for around 20 levels, um, which again isn't really that crazy. And again, I, I reckon things will level up fast in this game as well, especially with like the auto battle feature and stuff like that. And you're obviously beating so many things because of the three different stories. So I reckon they'll evolve really, really quick. Um, but either way, that's the information about the starters. Uh, the next thing to go over is all about Paradox Pokemon and what the designs are going to look like and stuff like that. So Riddler Koo tweeted out saying, if you are curious, yep, designs of Paradox and regional fakes. So the R fakes that he's talking about here are obviously the Convergent Evolution. So obviously we've just been introduced to Wiglet. Um, that's what he's kind of referring to there. And of course, the Paradox forms are obviously the new, the new po other new Pokemon forms in these games, which also are not Pokemon forms. It is just a completely new Pokemon. But either way, he's saying, you know, if you're curious, the designs of these Paradox forms and these Convergent Evolutions are on the same vibe. So, of course, Wiglet looks pretty similar to Diglett in the... Well, obviously with his name and, you know, his body shape and stuff like that. And what he's saying here is that these Paradox forms are going to look very similar to their other kind of our timeline forms if that makes sense because uh, they should look close enough to make you recognize their origins and you've seen two examples before by the way the balloon has nothing to do with fan series of vampire aboriginal theme so right here he's talking about um the jigglypuff so obviously the the jigglypuff paradox form was leaked like the face of it and it had like the little teeth coming out like dracula like a vampire and he's saying you know by the way jigglypuff has nothing to do with the fan series of vampire it's just a, a theme of it and then this person here is saying oh too bad a vampire theme may have been interesting with the jigglypuff's moon theme so paradox is even worse and lazier than ultra beast and then riddler Koo here is saying you know ultra beast has nothing to do with laziness all of them are god tier designs and again right here is just a, a great example of what i was talking about here you know this is two people here with different opinions on the Ultra Beast, you know. Um, Amashinu saying that Ultra Beasts are lazy, and then Riddler Koo's like, nah, they're, they're great. And again, that's exactly what I'm talking about in this post here, you know. A lot of people might really hate the middle ev evolutions, a lot of people really might really love them. But either way, yeah, that's the uh, the information about the, the Paradox form. They are going to look very similar to um, their kind of counterparts in our timeline. And this is a little bit more information about Convergent Evolutions as well. So this is the best way to explain it for everyone that doesn't really necessarily understand it. So regional forms of Pokemon occur when a Pokemon is introduced to a new habitat and has to adapt to it. So uh, let's take Geodude, for example. So of course, we have Geodude here, the Cantonian version, and then the Alolan version here. So this is the line of all Geodudes. So this line represents all Geodudes looking the exact same. And then what happens here is some Geodudes, they just go off and they go chill next to some like electrical stuff. And then that's why this Geodude here has to adapt to its new surroundings, which is why it becomes rock electric. Whereas this Geodude just kept chilling, living in boulders, you know, living in near the ground, whatever. And that's why that stayed the same because it didn't have to adapt to any new surroundings because that's what it was doing this whole time. But this, of course, was a new kind of environment for Geodude and that's why it adapted, changed its typing, changed its design and stuff like that. However though, with convergent species, on the other hand, are completely different species that due to the similarity of their habitats, habitats develop similar characteristics. So here we have Diglett and then here we have Wiglet. They have never been the same Pokemon, they just look the same or look quite similar because of their shared habitats and stuff like that. So a real life example of this would be like dolphins and sharks. Dolphins and sharks aren't the same animal, you know, they're, they're, of course they're not. But they look similar because of the fact that they live around, like they obviously both live in the ocean. It's like, I don't know, like dolphins and whales as well. Like it's not the same animal at all, but because they live in similar habitats, they look kind of similar. Like dolphins and sharks, yeah, you can tell them apart, but they do also look similar. And that's what a convergent evolution is. So these Pokemon here nothing like in in terms of like the, the same pokemon but they just look similar because of the habitats and stuff like that and then this one um the the regional forms are pokemon that had to adapt to their new surroundings so originally they weren't kind of at this new surrounding but they had to adapt to it so hopefully i explained that a little bit better that's basically the difference between like regional forms and convergent evolutions and stuff like that um but either way that's kind of how it's going and that's how they're kind of that's just kind of how they're representing it in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. And of course, the other conversion evolution that we know is um, Tentacool. So, of course, Tentacool is going to look very similar to 
uh, tentacle, well, the, the normal tentacle, but of course it's going to be like a different typing and stuff. And then obviously the regional forms we've got in this game are like Paldean Wooper and Tauros and stuff like that. So that's all the stuff about conversion evolutions and regional forms. A nice little science lesson for you there. Um, however, though, we're going to finish things off with this um, by Soul Silverar saying, Did anyone notice that this whole ecological study was run by Jacques? Shouldn't this be uh, headed up by our main professors instead? To me, this again suggests that Jacques is the true professor of Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. And like the Pokemon company said a long while back, Sarda and Turo aren't what they seem. Um, because this is actually a tweet that Pokemon uh, tweeted out. So Twitter Gaming said, what do they do for a living? Wrong answers only. And then Pokemon actually replied saying they are Pokemon professors. So again, that's kind of hinting that they're not actually Pokemon professors. And so Jacques might be the main professor that like gives us our starter and stuff like that. And then again, Professor... Professor Sada and Turo might be again some people are saying that they're imposters and stuff because that's potentially been leaked and I don't know there's a whole honestly this story for Scarlet and Violet sounds like it could be really good from like the leaks and stuff um, but yeah Jacques could definitely be like the main professor um, and we actually have this quote here saying Jacques is the one giving the Pokedex and probably the starters too while Sada and Turo are Koraiden and Maraiden's keepers I think it is very explicit that Jack is the welcome to the world of Pokemon intro professor I think this reply explains it very well obviously he's a biologist so it makes sense that he's doing this live stream however it also hints uh, to more he seems to be our traditional pokemon professor which is what we are led to believe sada and turo are uh, but i'm not too sure about that we've also not seen sada and turo in like any other locations apart from like this like random like we don't even know if this is a laboratory like there's just kind of a whiteboard in the background with some stuff and then that's it but there's not actually anything else to suggest that these are going to be the, the prof like the professors that we find at the start. So, again, they could just be imposters or something. I'm not too sure. But, yeah, potentially Jacques could be the one that gives us the Pokedex, gives us the starters, stuff like that. But either way, quite an interesting um, thought there. We also have Steelix saying, well, Jacques is a biologist and the professors are studying the lore of the region. True, but in reality, he should be a minor character in the game. But just like any of the other teachers that we saw in the trailers, but it seems like he's more important. Um, but either way, that's kind of all the leaks to go over for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do consider hitting the like button down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes. Leave a comment with your thoughts on the latest leaks. What do you think about the, the whole Ed Sheeran song being in a very sad, poignant scene? What are your thoughts on the start of middle stage revolutions, conversion evolutions, regional forms, all that? But that's going to be everything from me. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Ring the, no uh, ring the notification bell. Uh, but yeah, subscribe if you're brand new. All that stuff. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, peace.